Hi, and welcome to Just Selvos Live. Well, a few weeks ago, we did a show on the compulsory pre-commitment cards, in particular reference to the gambling that's happening in the pokey industry. We are really concerned about the number of people who are losing enormous amounts of money in poker machines. And we interviewed Tim Costello and he said that the pokies uh, were in desperate need of reform. But we knew that Clubs Australia were going to come after us. And they have. This weekend, they've launched a $20 million campaign, setting up basically every local club as a campaigning station against compulsory pre-commitment cards. Well, here at the Salvation Army, we're concerned about the most marginalised and vulnerable in our communities. And we know that those people with particularly pokey addictions are really in need of these cards and of this policy. So we want you to watch this episode again, and we want you to really think about how you can get involved in this issue. It's an important one, and we need you to step up. Enjoy the show. Tim Costello, thanks so much for joining us. A pleasure. Now, as you know, we talked uh, recently with Nick Xenophon, who's so passionate about this issue, um, but we're wondering if you could help us recap. Let's look at some of the facts, some of the figures. There's been a Productivity Commission report out. Mm. Well, most uh, Australians would be shocked to uh, hear that the Productivity Commission discovered that Australia has 20.4% of all the world's pokies. Now we're 0.2% of the world's population. <laughs> yeah. So how did we get 20.4% yeah. of all the world's yeah. pokies? They'd even be more shocked to realise that we have the hungriest, fastest uh, pokies with the huge speed losses up to a couple of thousand dollars an hour in, in mm, most yeah. places. So uh, we have a massive problem, and it's a problem that uh, now is hurting everyone. So uh, after heroin, the second greatest contributor to crime yeah. is pokies. Mm. So uh, it's not as if there's just a few sad individuals and yeah. uh, you know they're stupid, addicted. Um, this is now having mm. a ripple effect in yeah. our community. Mm. Yeah. So how many people are we talking? How many? people are we talking and how much are they losing? How much of this is affecting? Well, uh, addicted, it's uh, uh, over 100,000 Australians. Uh, they have no free choice. So when the gambling industry says, well, no one's forced to gamble, um, uh, uh, here are the gambling industry with the pokies preying on people mm. who have no free choice. Another 300,000, the Productivity Commission says, are at uh, risk, serious risk of addiction. So 400,000 Australians. Mm. But it gets worse. Those 400,000 Australians impact on five to ten others each. So that's up to four million Australians directly impacted, mm. which is why everyone has a story. Yeah, who are those uh, people that are impacted? Uh, well, it's increasingly women. So um, yeah. it, before pokies were introduced here in 1991 in Victoria, uh, my state, um, there was only men that basically went to TABs and race yeah. courses. Once pokies were introduced, uh, a different culture because where does a woman who's middle aged go where you can get dressed up, where mm, someone brings yeah. your coffee and opens mm. the door for you and walks you to your car? Mm. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, men who were predominantly the, the problem, and women are only 7% of problem gamblers before pokies, now it's over 55% of problem mm. gamblers are women. And guess who pays uh, for the food on the table, mm. does the shopping, pays yep. the schools, uh, school bills? Clothes the kids, that's women. So this is why the impact yeah. mm -hmm. is so devastating. Yeah, trickling down. It's crazy. It certainly is. So we realise that the states have got a bit of a grip on this. Uh, they love the cash and explain it, understandably so. So what do we do about that? Well, we've had a, uh, a remarkable election last year, a minority government uh, yeah. kept in power by some independents. One of those independents was uh, from Tasmania, Andrew Wilkie. Yeah. And he said, if you want my vote to uh, Julie Gillard and Tony Abbott, um, you have to promise to bring in what's called a, uh, a compulsory pre-commitment card. Yeah. Mm. So you can't play the pokies without sticking that card in. And it's called pre-commitments because before you can play, you set the losses you're prepared to live with. It might be $300 over this week. And once you've uh, hit those losses, you're locked out from all machines, mm. not just in that venue, but yes. every machine in every pokies venue. And uh, this is a written agreement between Andrew Wilkie keeping the Gillard government in power. 
So the Gillard government have announced they're going mm. to do this. And guess what? All hell has broken loose mm. with the gaming industry and with state governments mm. who are addicted to the easy revenue from mm. pokies addicts just flowing in. Some 13, 14% of state revenue mm. comes from addicted people playing pokies. Yeah. That's insane. That's a That's huge, a huge amount. Yeah. And so what are we going to do about that? I mean, how do we counteract that? How do we convince the states, the clubs, the whoever else is actually uh, benefiting from this stuff that they need to change their ways? Well, uh, you'll never convince the clubs because uh, they're <laughs> going to run and are running a, a, a mining tax style uh, adver advertising campaign. Okay. $20 million they've set aside. In mm -hmm. Australia, that's mm -hmm. a huge amount yeah. of advertising to stop the Gillard yeah. government doing this and to bring it down. Yeah. Um, and when you say to those clubs, but how can you live with yourself knowing that over 50 cents in every dollar going through a machine comes from someone addicted who has no free choice? Yep. Um, just as you would say to the liquor or alcohol industry, you know, if you depended for 50% of your profits, your revenue on alcoholics, they would say, well, that's immoral. Well, it's immoral with pokies. Mm. Um, so they are running a massive campaign, which is why we actually need the voice of... Uh, so many Australians mm. to say, a pre-commitment card uh, still allows me to play. It's a legal adult entertainment. Yep. I haven't lost my right. Mm. But of course, being able to set limits beforehand, mm. because a pokies player, a, an addict, chases losses. Mm. They are yep. only one win away from not having a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is why yeah. you will never set your limits in the heat of play. Yeah. And you find it so hard to walk away. We need Australians to speak up and say, we want this to say to the Gillard government, you're doing the right thing. Mm. To support Andrew Wilkie, because we saw what happened uh, with Kevin Rudd and the mining tax. That uh, campaign yep. literally brought a yep. prime minister down. Yep. This campaign uh, for needed pokies reform could bring a prime minister down again. Yep. Yep. That's what's at stake here. Yeah. Can I just... Why would the general public not be on side with this? It seems logical. Why? What's stopping this general mass support for this compulsory pre-commitment? Well, the industry tells lies. So the industry says, look, uh, it's only uh, 100,000 addicts, so 99% uh, uh, of the public play safely. Yeah. Um, what they don't tell you is only 30% of Australians ever play the pokies in a year. Yeah. Um, of that 30%, it's only 15% playing regularly. And so the, the numbers addicted are actually a very high percentage mm. of those mm. playing. That's where the crime and the uh, knock-on effects of mm. fraud in business is all coming from. Um, the five to ten other Australians they affect. So this is why um, people are confused. They go, well, I don't really play. Mm. Uh, so when the industry says, oh, it's ruin, we're not going to be able to employ people. Well, let me give you a figure. For every million dollars spent on pokies, it creates one job. For every million dollars spent on uh, retail, it creates 10 jobs, mm. shopping. Mm. For every million dollars yep. spent in um, uh, restaurants and that area, it creates yep. 20 jobs. Pokies mm. are a massive job destroyer mm. uh, for the yep. amount of money. So yeah. most Australians need to hear these facts, yeah. not hear the, yep. the lies. Yeah, yeah. Wow. This is funny. It's one of those issues where I feel like the moral agenda and the justice agenda are actually going to marry yeah. together. I mean, it feels like there's a giant win here for everybody. So how do we mobilise the masses of Australia to get on Well, I can see the excitement in your eyes. <laughs> the uh, the, uh, it the doesn't sweet happen spot. Often. <laughs> well, it all just seems so obvious as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. It all just seems but you're right. Simple. See, it, let's, let's call it uh, left and right wing in one mm. sense. Uh, right wing moral perspectives, uh, particularly of churches, was... Um, if I win at gambling, my joy comes only because someone lost and they're yep. sad. So how is that moral? Mm. Uh, the justice agenda says it's fascinating that most of the pokies are in the poorest postcodes mm. in Australia. There are massive redistribution of money from the poorest people into the pockets of obscenely rich gaming mm. yep. industry giants and state governments. So justice and moral issues mm. here come together. Mm, yep. Yeah. That's, um, we want to talk a little bit about the way forward. Now, you've been uh, at the forefront of this issue since before Crown Casino, since before the proliferation of pokies. No doubt you and, and others like you were making some big uh, predictions then. Uh, I'd be interested to know, have, have those predictions come to fruition? And what do we do to move this thing forward? Yeah, uh, we, we certainly said that um, 
this is going to hurt Australian society. And when I started speaking out when Crown Casino was being mm. built, yeah. I remember uh, our main newspaper here in Melbourne, The Age, even editorialised against me. It said, go away, Tim Costello. You're a wowser, a killjoy. You know, they're legal in other countries, of course. Yeah. Now, whether it's The Age or The Herald Sun, two papers here, um, mm. we have won this debate um, the latest Vox Pop taken by the Herald Sun, one of the papers, asking Victorians, do they support pokies? 85% said rip them all out. Wow. We have seen yep. the ripple effect. We have mm. seen the damage. So it's mm. gone from, uh, you know, you're just a false prophet scaring mm. us mm -hmm. to uh, <laughs> oh, well, look really at this damage. Danger. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's really important for us to hear as well because mm. I think we will be sold this this lie that yes. actually we all want the pokies and it's not true. I certainly know the music industry doesn't want them. A whole bunch of people who are affected yeah. by this industry don't want them. So how do we wind it back then? We've got we've just signed a new deal with uh, new pokey arrangements. We've got Crown Casino still uh, growing strong. How mm. do we wind this monster back? Yeah. Well, uh, we've had a few victories here in uh, Victoria. So uh, New South Wales has 90 thousand pokies, nearly 10% of all the world's pokies. Um, we were to get 90,000 here in Victoria. <laughs> because we campaigned, that was capped to 30,000. So yeah. we started to have Great. a win. Um, Andrew Wilkie's deal, pre-commitment cards, is incredibly important yeah. because yeah. all the research shows with problem gamblers that uh, they actually say, someone help me here. Mm. I know yeah. I'm out of control mm. and being able to set my losses mm. is one of the best ways. Mm. So this is why... Uh, speaking up now mm -hmm. in support of compulsory pre-commitment mm -hmm. cards yep. is so yep. important. And it makes sense regulating addiction. We love to regulate addiction <laughs> all the time. It's something the general public do. So so this is something yep. we're really saying, yes, actually this is one time we're saying yes, really. Well, when the industry says, oh, this is a loss of our liberties, yeah. you know, and a loss yeah. of, uh, it's the nanny state. Um, well, it was the, the nanny state that said you've got to wear a seatbelt. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. It's a nanny state that actually says you have to have responsible service of alcohol exactly. and publicans are yep. fined if yep. I mean this yep. is just another extension of that yeah. idea yeah being responsible and the state is responsible for us I think yep um, <laughs> we don't want to take up too much more of your time but can you tell us watching at home what can we do now we, we know uh, the problems we want to jump on board and help right to uh, uh, Julia Gillard mm -hmm. the Prime Minister saying you support the compulsory pre-commitments mm -hmm. idea yep. uh, right to Andrew Wilkie saying the same um, let your state premiers know, because yeah. state premiers mm. are really the problem mm. here. They are amongst the biggest mm -hmm. gambling addicts. <laughs> yeah. uh, the revenue is just so easy. Yeah. They yeah. don't have to actually do anything unpopular mm. like raise taxes. They mm. just let more pokies mm. into the poorest areas. Mm. Let your state premiers know that you support Julia Gillard and this pre-commitment of uh, cards for pokies. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, Thank you so much. A pleasure. Great to be with you. Incredibly challenging, uh, certainly interesting. Tim mm. Costello, what an absolute guru in Australian social policy, uh, particularly around gambling. Jen, what can we do? I think the really important thing that we need to do is to make it clear that we are actually on the side of these pre-commitment cards. Yep. Um, I think it's really important that we, we send letters to both our members of parliament, to people who are influential in some way to make yeah. it known that actually we are anti-poker machines and that we really do care about people and and making just compulsory making um, cards is not enough yeah. they have to be compulsory pre-commitment yeah. cards and we actually have a draft letter that people can access we do those dra draft letters are going out right now they're actually um, ways that sh to show you who you need to write the letter to and what you need to include in your letter yeah. you can get a copy of that from um, your division if you're in the southern territory yeah. Um, so please do that and we want to see as many letters going to different uh, people in Parliament yep. as we can. It's really important that we get on side with this. And if you want a copy of that letter, if you're not uh, in the Salvation Army, you can always email us at Just Salvos uh, and the address is right there. Of course, you can jump on our Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Just Salvos. We're going to be talking to Tim Costello again in a couple of weeks. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be telling us all about uh, Indigenous issues and just where we are at in Australia. Well, we look forward to that. See you on Facebook. Catch you next week on Just Salvos Live.